Hi everybody, it's Shannon uh, from King Family Farm and today uh, I'm just doing basic chores. I'm going to make a loaf of bread. I've got some jam that I need to can. So I'm going to start with the bread and I guess I cheat a little bit. I have a bread maker and this is it right here. And, uh, I, it was my mom. It's like 30, 35 years old and that's why I use it. And I don't bake the bread right in it, but I really, really like to be able to just dump everything in the pot, press start, and in an hour and 15 minutes, I can roll the loaf, put it in a loaf pan, let it proof again, and then bake. So I can kind of set and forget it while I do other things like my dishes and set up to can some jam because I have a craft sale this weekend. So um, I picked up some 100% stone ground whole wheat flour from Spearville Mill here in New Brunswick, and I'm really excited to so um, it's organic um, and their products are all from New Brunswick. So I already measured it out. I use a cup and a half of whole wheat and a cup and a half of white. And I'm just gonna dump that in here. Usually I, I got the scale out because normally when I make bread, I weigh everything. But this recipe is a recipe that came with the bread maker and it's really good. So. I, that's the one I tend to use. So, um, so a cup and a half of a wheat, cup and a half of white. Get a quarter cup of brown sugar. I like dark brown sugar, but I really like molasses. So the dark brown sugar has a lot more molasses in it. I do need some butter. That is the end of the butter off the butter dish. So it's time to uh, get some more butter out of the freezer. It's about two tablespoons of butter. Yeah. And so we've got the brown sugar, flour, do, 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 and a cup and like three tablespoons of warm water. You want it like baby bath water. You don't want it too warm. Um, if it's too warm, it'll wreck your yeast and it'll be, you just, it won't rise. So the original recipe only called for a cup, but when I'm using stone ground, I find it sucks up a lot more moisture. And one of the things that people don't like about whole wheat bread is it has a tendency to be really, really heavy. And that's because whole wheat really sucks up that water. So if you add a little more water and you get a nice soft dough, you'll find that your whole wheat breads or your 50-50, which is what we're making right now, is not as heavy, which is really great. So, and my family's more likely to eat it, which is kind of the point. So I do make a lot of our breads. This is just a really easy way for me to do that. So put that water in, tablespoon of yeast. I buy yeast in those big kilogram bags and um, I keep them in the freezer and then when I open them up, I put it, this is an old peanut butter jar, and I put it in the freeze in the fridge and we put a tablespoon of yeast in there and that's it so we're just going to put this find the front there's the front put this in the bread maker just like that turn it on set it for dough press start and in an hour and 15 minutes I'll have dough that's been kneaded and been through its first proofing and uh, then I can just forget about it. Ooh, I know what I forgot to put in there. Teaspoon of salt. And it's going to taste weird. If you don't put salt, if you don't put salt in your bread, you're going to be like, what is wrong with this bread? It doesn't taste good. I don't like it. And uh, we'll just pop that in there. Just a teaspoon. Makes a difference. I knew there was something I forgot. That's because I can't find my recipe, so I'm going by what's in my head. And uh, yeah, so that's that's it. So today we're just we're doing some household stuff. I got dishes to do because there's always dishes, and uh, a little bit of tidying up. And then I'm gonna make some more jam. Probably make about five batches of jam this morning. What time is it? It's uh, it's quarter to ten, so I'll probably get three or four done. And, uh, and then it'll be lunchtime, and I'll make some after, and then fudge this afternoon. So uh, 
I might revisit you guys and show you what I'm up to this afternoon. So we're doing some chores outside. We've got to collect some eggs. It's, um, it's not particularly warm today. It's raining earlier. It's uh, the breeze and the rain, it makes it quite damp. So we need to head down to the garage. I've got to collect some eggs. So we're headed down to do that. And um, we're gonna check our Easter eggers. They were molting and they were looking rough, real scraggly. So what I'm hoping now is that they've kind of gotten over that and they are starting to lay again. I'm only getting about two or three a day out of them, which makes me kind of sad because um, they lay such pretty eggs. So, and then I've got a bunch of commercial girls and we're gonna collect their eggs too. And uh, we'll see how that goes. We've already fed the turkeys and Luna hears me coming. So she's come over to see what's going on. So we'll see. Hey Luna, hey sweetie. Hi, hi, you wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? Here's Luna. Say hi Luna. Hey, you want a little, you want a little snuggle? Hey. You say hi to everybody. You're such a pretty girl. Yes, you are. You're such a pretty girl. Okay, we'll put you down. You go back do your mousing. It's your job. You're good at it. We're quite impressed with you. She's one of our rescues, and uh, she's usually very much underfoot first thing in the morning, and so she can get her kibble. But she's also just an excellent mouser. We usually see her with um, a mouse, at least one mouse a day in the morning. We're just checking in here. Hey, sweetie, you got something under you? Got something under you? Yes, you do. So, here we go. Isn't that pretty? It's just beautiful. So I'm just gonna put that in my pocket so I can close up the A-frame here. So these, my Easter eggs are still out in the A-frame because there's still grass. Even though it's cold, they'll still, what they'll do is they'll go up top. So you can see here, it's just an A-frame pen. That's the water, that's where we get the eggs. It's really simple. Um, we have a bell waterer, and then I have a, a no waste bucket that I made for, for uh, feeding them. And then we just move them every couple of days along the grass. And you can see the grass is still quite green. So we're moving them around because we want them to enjoy as much grass as they can for as long as they can. And then once the snow flies, even then, I'll probably leave them out another week, make sure that the snow is going to stick. And then we'll put them inside for the winter. So for right now, they're doing good out here. They really like it. And uh, we just got the one egg. Now, they tend to lay a little bit later. So I think what's going to happen is I'll come back out here in the evening to shut everything down and lock everybody in for the night. And there's going to be a couple more eggs in there, which seems to be the pattern. Tom can hear me coming because I'm talking. And so he's, he's gobbling away. Luna's still following me. I think she's hoping for some treats. So we're still working on putting things away for winter. And uh, we come in the garage here, it's pretty dark. But I've left the lights on in here. Oops, excuse me guys. I've left the lights on in here today because it's just so gray that I don't think my lights fell down here. I have a string of Christmas lights that I that come on at four in the morning. So because we've had some uh, production issues with eggs now, I'm probably going to start tapering that off because I've got some new girls laying. I've already collected some eggs today. Um, first thing this morning there was already some. So we've got our new girls are now laying, so it's not as big a deal. Whoop. Look at that. Leaving me some nice eggs. So, we have tried a variety of different nest box ideas. And so far, our favorite is, is this bin. I'm gonna, and all it is, they've been standing on top of it. It's just a trashed Rubbermaid and it doesn't really hold things very well. It's cracked on the other side. So I cut a hole in it 
and um, I have found it to be the easiest way, the, seriously, the easiest way for us to get eggs from our girls. So I'll just show you, I'm gonna turn the camera around again, and see, we got some eggs this morning, but look at that. And it's just, they're nice and clean. These aren't bad size, actually, for new girls. They're still a fairly small, fairly small egg. There we go. So, we're going to do some work on the weekends. Uh, when my husband's home, it's a little easier for me to do uh, some of the bigger chores because I do have small children. Um, now they are, one's at school, and one is with my mother-in-law today. He went to visit Nanny, so that's what he's doing. So it's allowing me to do some stuff today that I wouldn't normally get done. Um, and it's allowing me to do this video because he would talk the whole time, which, I mean, I encourage them to speak. So it's great. Um, oh, it looks like another white hen might lay. We did get five five white eggs yesterday out of our new girls so I think I disturbed the one girl in the middle of laying and she left and she'll go back in so but we really like these totes the first time I saw it was at I was trying to figure it out we use buckets I've used milk crates I think I was looking at an old video from Appalachia's homestead with Patera and I saw she didn't talk about the the uh, bins for nest boxes but that was what she was using them for and I thought, oh, that looks like a really good idea. And it seems to work. The hens really like that they can get in and it's dark and nobody's really bugging them. And uh, so it works really well for us. So we've got multiple pens here all lined up. And we're just going to move into the next one here. Because I set this up so originally, so I could divide it into five different breeding pens if I wanted to. So I could have very specific um, birds, like a very specific selection of hens breeding with a very specific rooster. And it would allow for that. Um, right now, we're not really doing a lot of breeding. Um, we're just trying to keep up with our egg customers. Um, there's been a real increase in desire for local product. And uh, we're thrilled that people trust us to raise food for them. And uh, so right now what we have is one pen of old girls who are two, two and a half, some of them are three. Um, and then we have a pen of um, girls that are 20 weeks old. They're just starting to lay. And that's kind of how we're dividing them. And then as the older girls <laughs> stop laying, they'll get culled out um, and they'll end up in the stew pot. What we'll do is we'll make uh, chicken stock and I'll show you how to do that sometime. Because what I do is I cull them out and I save them in the freezer until I have like four or five. And uh, sometimes I call my roosters at the same time. And then as long as I have four or five at a time, they're not too big. There's not much meat on them. So they're not really, they're not something I would save and grow out and try and get some meat on them um, for a roast chicken. But they make absolutely fantastic chicken stock. Um, so much more flavor. So it's just... I'm just looking at Tom here. He's my roost or my um, my um, turkey Tom, and he's just stunning. He's all. Let's see if he'll let me video him, because he's just fantastic. We need to get in here and clean. Nope, he's not gonna do it. He's not gonna display. Hey Tom, here he goes. Look at him. Isn't he lovely? He's just a beautiful boy. He just likes to show off for the ladies. So he's a royal palm, and uh, we got him as a chick, and we just love him. He's great. So, so yeah. We're, so we're gonna we got to get in here on the weekend and uh, do a solid clean out. We do that every couple of weeks. I mean, there is it's just not that spotless all the time. So we try to keep everybody as comfortable as we can um, and do the best we can. Let's see, there's some more eggs. Tom is very curious about what I'm doing here collecting. Now there's lots of people who will tell you that you can't raise turkeys and chickens together. Um, 
and there there's truth in that um, we have not had a problem and we continue to do that um, so I recommend doing your own research um, you can get your chickens can give turkeys a disease called blackhead and and so that's the rescue run so that's the collection of eggs from here somebody was eating her food too fast and she's choking on it little lady you might want to have some water to go with that so so this was an old garage and last year my dad helped me convert it into a bunch of pens um, and it's worked really really well for us we we mostly use some two by fours for the uprights everything else is one by threes one by yes one by threes and chicken wire and it does the job now that's that said um it's not predator proof which means outside of this area we had to put up in the eaves we had to put um protection up in there so we still have lots of ventilation but we had to stop animals from coming in in the eaves and um we do we of course we have cats for rodent control and we keep an eye on things so chicken wire is not predator proof, predator proof. um it's economical though um so if you're looking for something a little more predator proof you would look at like a quarter inch um hardware cloth that would do a much better job for you um we even used this was a solid wall and my dad used a uh reciprocating saw and cut a hole out we marked him and we put in these these were old glass panels that he had and we put them in and it's added light in here for us so it's it's a lot nicer uh, for them but today is just really gray <coughs> so I decided that the best thing I could do was uh, just leave the lights on them for them for them and quite frankly they're LED lights so they do the job um, you don't want to stay in with the chickens but there we go got a kitten trying to stay in with the chickens there we go so that concludes the egg collecting in the lower barn and the bunnies all have water and food they all look good so we've got that taken care of so we're gonna go up to the main barn and collect the eggs there and then we go in and uh, into the house and into the laundry room and we'll wash them and put them in the fridge um, you don't need to wash eggs uh, I have customers that prefer their eggs not washed and they just let me know. Looks like I have a cat following me. I do. Um, but most of our customers prefer washed eggs. Um, they, they want farm fresh, but they want their eggs to be like they are from the store, which means they're washed and ready to use. So unwashed eggs, you can, if your house isn't stiflingly warm, you can leave unwashed eggs on the uh, counter and that's not a problem uh, and they'll keep just fine you just want to wash them before you use them which is really important whoo it's a hill we were the house is up on quite the hill here so um, it makes for spectacular views and good drainage and uh, good exercise so we're gonna get the rest of our eggs here from the baby barn and looks like all the other ladies have all dispersed for the most part and we let our chickens free range it's not everybody's thing and that's okay um, we find them to be much happier and healthier but what's gonna happen now is once the snow flies they're not going to do it they're not going to free range so we try to give them as much space as we can for as long as we can i think i just broke that egg in my pocket oh i didn't yay 
Just for a second there, I thought I'd broke it. And these girls have kicked all the shavings. So I can't close the door, the interior door. There we go. I'm trying to get better at this whole filming thing. There we go. Okay. What are you guys doing in here? You think I got treats for you? Mm hmm? So, we get about, right now we get about four dozen eggs a day. When our new girls start laying, we'll probably be up to about seven. Um, chickens, owning your own and raising eggs is not more economical than buying them at the store. It just isn't. Um, I mean, if you want one or two hens, and I recommend more than two, simply because chickens are a flock animal and they do best in groups. They're supposed to be in a group. So the best thing you can do for them is to have more than one. Um, the price of feed is greatly increasing right now. It is a shocking price. And the price of diesel here in New Brunswick, where we are, last Saturday, tipped 305 a liter. So we're Can we're in Canada, so everything's by the liter. That's that's pushing that's pushing nine dollars US per US gallon, which is 3.7 liters. And so not only is the price of feed going up, and it's going to go up more with that, but the price to go get that feed is going up. And so having your own chickens is not going to get you cheaper eggs. It just isn't. However, um, I mean, we, we buy feed by the ton, so it's a little, it's more economical that way because we have so many. Um, but it's still, we can't raise them as cheaply as they're raised in the store. And that's just, that's just the way it is. So, um, however, if you want to have a fam, oh, I think I just broke an egg. If you want to have a family pet, I highly recommend chickens. Because at least when you're feeding them, they're going to give you some food. Um, they're really easy to keep. They're super friendly if you get the right breeds. They're fairly quiet. I mean, they can be a bit chatty. Um, they don't really require a whole lot. You visit them in the morning, go collect your eggs midday visit them in the evening i mean the whole thing takes me 15 minutes to feed everybody in the morning and that that's like multiple pens and uh and then another 15 minutes or so to uh another 15 minutes or so to collect eggs and then another 15 so 45 minutes a day and i have a lot of birds so if you only had a couple of birds in a pen in your backyard it wouldn't be that big a deal now I think it's getting into eggs to sell eggs may not be the best thing for you as a homesteader. However, they're a really cheap form of protein. So if you want to have chickens, um, I think that they're an economical way for you to learn how to produce your own food. They're a, they're a gateway animal. <coughs> they're a great, they're a great place to start. Um, and we do, we love them. The kids love them. They're really easy to handle. They're pretty inexpensive to buy. I mean, a commercial chicken, which is mostly what I have at this point. Um, I do have some heritage breeds. The commercial chickens are $13 maximum each. And that's for a ready to lay pullet. So you don't have to feed it for months and months and months. Well, not months and months and months, weeks and weeks, like 18, 20 weeks before they lay. You don't have to do that. You can get a chicken that's ready to lay and a bag of feed will cost you 25 to $28 and that'll last six hens, probably about a month. 
So you get some enjoyment out of it. Um, I mean, they force you out of bed in the morning because you got to take care of them. So they're not, again, they're not super cheap. But if you're looking to produce your own food um, and quality food, I mean, that's that's the real kicker is is that, yes, they're more expensive to raise your own eggs than the ones you buy at the grocery store. But that isn't taking into account uh, comparing the eggs that you would get um, that are organic, free range, blah, blah, blah. Those are like $9 or more a dozen at the grocery store right now, I think. I mean, I haven't looked at the price of eggs in ages, although I know conventional eggs are, are over $5 now. They come on sale a little bit cheaper, but they're about 5 bucks. So I think that you can raise perfectly healthy eggs on a conventional feed. Organic feed is going to cost you more. It's going to cost you about $35 a bag, $40 a bag. So that's a choice that you can make and it won't make your eggs cost more, but you know, it's in your food. So, I mean, as pets go, they're kind of fun. They're kind of easy going. You can fill up their water and feed for a couple of days, like a cat and leave them for a couple of days and they'll be good. And, and it's a non-issue. So I think, I think as a gateway animal, they're, they're definitely a worthwhile animal. They are something that we thought, Oh, we just get a few hens for us and the kids will love it. And, and uh, here we are selling eggs to other people who um, may not have the land or the ability to keep chickens. Now that said, as long as your local bylaws allow, there's no reason that you can't keep two hens in a very small backyard, right? They, as long as you keep them clean and you keep them bedded, there's, we free range ours. You don't have to, you can keep them in a small chicken tractor and then insulate it well for the winter and they're fine. Um, you want them to have, I go for, if you're going to come keep them confined all the time, you want to go for about 10 square feet of bird. And, uh, that gives them all the room they need. Um, and, and I just think they're fun. I mean, I really enjoy them. I really enjoy watching them. So they're, they're definitely worthwhile. Um, we like the commercial ones, um, simply because we sell eggs and they're consistent layers. Um, they lay a nice brown egg. Um, I do have some uh, decob whites that lay a, a nice large white egg and because these guys are petite they don't eat as much um, so it helps our profit margin which is important for what we're doing um, but if you're just if you're looking into homesteading um, I would look at chickens as a food as a food source before I'd look at them as an income source um, because everybody's selling eggs. <laughs> So sometimes that gets a little bit difficult in the winter, trying to move eggs. Um, Cause these guys do lay, they don't lay well in the winter, but they do lay. So that that's a bit of an issue, but we just eat more eggs in the winter. That's all we do. We just eat a lot more eggs and they are a cheap, cheap source of food. So I think that's a great, uh, a great thing to be looking at. So I'm just- Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, so the bread just finished in the bread maker. I've been outside, done some barn chores, and it's just, it's a little chilly. It's damp out there, so I'm going to hoodie up right now. Um, this is what the bread looks like when it comes out of the bread maker. It's, see how nice and soft that is? We're going to knock it back. Um, I prefer to put oil on my countertop. Um, this is not a finished countertop. We're still working on building our kitchen, so this is actually, um, a folding table just sitting on top of my island until we get the counter made. So I've wiped this down really well. I'm going to put some oil on it. I'm using avocado oil. You can use olive oil. You can use vegetable oil. Um, the reason I prefer oil over flour is because the bread, if you, if you ever need bread and you need it and you need it and you need it and you can keep adding flour, what happens is that bread gets heavy because it'll just keep sucking that flour up and just for the same reason that we put extra water in here because it's stone ground we um, also want to not add any more flour to it because we don't want it to be tough so I'm just gonna spread that around spread it on our hands dump this out now I'm gonna put the recipe below this um, 
You can knead this by hand. You can do this in a stand mixer with a dough hook, whatever works for you. And we're actually literally gonna knock this back. Now I can feel that this is um, a heavier, coarser whole wheat than I normally would buy from the store um, because it is stone ground. But I think it's gonna have really great flavor. It smells so good, but you, as you can see, it doesn't stick. So I prefer using oil. So I'm just gonna make a rectangle and we knock it back. That's what they mean by knocking it back. We're gonna take the air out of it. And then we're gonna roll it. Just like this. Yeah, this is really nice. It smells really good. I'm very excited about that. And we pinch the seam. And I like the seam on the bottom. So I take the edges, pinch, tuck underneath, pinch it, tuck it underneath, just like that. And then this is just your regular loaf pan. I've greased it with butter. Um, we're going to stick this in here, just like that. And we're going to cover it with a clean towel. And because we've used oil, these don't stick. So we're just going to stick it like that and we're going to wait for this to proof up until it's at least an inch above this pan and once it hits that point i'm going to turn my oven on and uh, and then we'll just let it continue to rise um, while the oven warms up and we'll come back and we'll show you what it looks like before it goes in the oven like this we're going to turn the oven on and uh, once that heats up we'll pop it in the oven Hi there, so we're back and our bread has risen and you can see that it's it's a good inch, inch and a half above the pan when you push on it. It comes back, but it's really slow so you can still see my fingerprint on it. So this is ready to go in the oven. If you tapped on that and your fingerprint immediately disappeared, you want to continue to let that rise up a little bit or it'll burst in the oven. And this might still burst on me a little bit, but it's going to get a nice round shape for us. Um, so the oven is at 350 and I'm just going to pop that in. Now I have a pizza stone that I keep in my bottom rack and I like it there. I find things cook a little more evenly. Um, and then when I make pizza, I just move it up a rack. So we're just going to pop that in. Like that. Set the timer for 35 minutes and that's it. So I've been prepping for lunch. My husband will be home in about 15 minutes. So we're gonna have some lunch and then we're gonna continue on with our day. So the bread's in the oven and uh, we're in the laundry room here. And I'm just, I'm washing and packing. I wash the eggs and now I'm just, I dry them. Cause then they don't stick to the carton and uh, I'll pack these off and they end up in the fridge. So we kind of accidentally ended up as home, as, as farmers, as homesteaders. I mean, I, I started doing this because I had this bright idea that I wanted to feed my kids really good food and uh, right, new mom, only the best for your kid, right? They're going to eat all organic and yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't work out that way. I promise you. Best of intentions. But we get tired and um, sometimes we're good with them just eating mac and cheese. As long as they ate, we're good. So, um, so we ended up, you know, I was already growing some food and I thought the chickens would be fun and we'd have fresh eggs and I could feel better about the way the chickens were living. Um, when I was buying, instead of, instead of buying eggs, I could feel better knowing how my chickens were living and what they were eating and their quality of life, which was important to me. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's appropriate to torture animals for food. Um, I mean, I'm aware that being an omnivore is, is a choice. And, uh, with that choice, I think you need to understand what that truly means, but 
we don't have to treat our animals poorly to have food. Um, and I think that they taste better when they've been treated well. So that was part of the reason we decided to, to take this path. And eggs were just kind of like this little gateway for me to control part of what was in our food and it's what I wanted. And my husband was like, yeah, well, okay, but I'm not helping you feed them and I don't want to take care of them. And so I was kind of like, well, okay, you know, I understand. It's my deal. Now, I gotta say, he's into it now. He really is. He enjoys them as much as I do. He enjoys the barn cats as much as I do. Um, he works a full-time off-farm job and uh, he comes home every day for lunch. So we, um, we enjoy that time together. Um, so, and then on the weekends, he takes over the main regular barn chores. And what that allows is for him to get a nice breakfast because then I have the time to cook a fancier brunch than I would normally make during the week, which is you get cereal or you get scrambled eggs or you get toast and that's kind of it. So he does those chores and that allows, and that allows me to make, um, you know, biscuits and beans and bacon and eggs and stuff like that. So we can have a nicer, <coughs> a nicer, um, breakfast, sit down breakfast with the kids and, and they enjoy that as well. And the kids get to help me in the kitchen cause I've got time for that. instead of just trying to get it done. So everybody gets fed. So, and, and I really believe in, in having your children in the kitchen with you and teaching them to cook. I think it's extremely important that we take the time to teach our children to cook. Because if I could tell you one thing about how to save some money on your homestead, in your life, even if you live in a small, apart, a small apartment, and saving money right now is a really big deal. Um, my advice would be to learn how to cook from scratch. It's that simple. I can make the same meal that I can get at a restaurant and I don't begrudge them the cost for that um, because I know how much labor costs and how much food costs. Hey, sweetie, how are you? I heard you talking. Yeah, mama's talking. Mama's making a video. You're gonna go play in your room? Yeah. Okay. So, but if you want to save some money, you learn to cook from scratch. The kids enjoy helping you in the kitchen, and they too will learn that skill. But you can make food so much cheaper than you can buy it. You really can. You're talking to yourself. I'm talking to myself, am I? It looks like it, because I've got the camera facing me, but Mama's making a video. She's trying to help people learn to farm and learn to cook, and... Um, hopefully people want to watch this kind of stuff. Do you think your mom is a good cook? Yeah. Yeah, you think your mom is a good cook? Ooh, oh, knocking stuff over, kiddo. It's okay. You just leave it. Mom will get it. Just leave it there. All right. Thank you. So, anyway, so that's... Jeez, we did good today. Oh, I had a half dozen eggs. I was going to say, that was an awful lot of eggs today. It's five dozen. Um, but I already had half a dozen. So we got four and a half dozen eggs today. So we're doing good because the, the new girls are really starting to lay. So that's uh, really helpful. But yes, if you want to save yourself some money, one of the greatest things you can do is learn to cook from scratch. And so I think after today I did the video, I, I did, uh, we're making the bread. Um, I'll get more in details with making bread, making your own homemade beans, making... If you want to prepare food, you want to be prepared. You want to have stuff in your pantry. You don't need that fancy freeze-dried stuff. You just need to, have to know how to cook rice and beans. I mean, it's cheap. It's easy to keep. No fancy storage needed. And you'll have really good quality meals. So I think that's what we're going to venture into as winter continues is um, doing some cooking from scratch because um, the out outdoor chores are mostly done. So uh, I think it's about time. i got to make lunch. And uh, we'll see you when the bread comes out of the oven. So the timer's gone off on this. It was 35 minutes. I'm going to turn the oven off and the timer off because I've made this loaf quite a bit. And 35 minutes usually does it. So I'm just going to get it out here, put it on the rack. And it's nice and toasty. It's hollow. You can see it burst a little bit. 
Um, you can slash the loaf and that'll prevent it, but I don't really like the shape, so I don't tend to do that with it. Um, I'm going to tip this out so it doesn't go soggy and it sounds nice and hollow, which is what you want. The other thing you can do is you can just stick a thermometer in it and it should read uh, about 205 and that'll tell you that it's cooked all the way through. If you're not 100% confident, because there's nothing like partially baked bread, it's not very good. So this is just hitting 204 and a half, which is good enough for me. So this is ready to go. We're gonna let this cool for at least an hour before we cut into it. And what that will do is it'll set the crumb so that um, it's easier to slice all around. If you cut into it right now, you release all the steam and it, the bread all the way through it will get really, really gummy. And it's just, it's not as nice a loaf of bread. So if you let this cool for an hour on the counter, it'll be, uh, it'll be really great for supper tonight and sandwiches for the next couple of days. And that's it.